Okay, so this is the final vodcast on photosynthesis, and it's going to deal with the dark stage, or the light-independent stage of photosynthesis. Now, the dark stage is also called the light-independent stage because it does not require light to occur. The light stage obviously cannot occur without light. The plant needs the sunlight, but during the dark stage, it is independent of light. It doesn't matter whether light is present or not. Let's take a look first at what was produced during the light stage. So there were three products of the light stage. And they like to ask in the Leaving Cert exam, what were the products of the light stage of photosynthesis and what is their fate? So first, what are they? Number one was ATP. ATP was produced during cyclic electron transport, that's pathway one of the light stage. Number two, NADPH, which was produced during pathway two, non-cyclic electron transport. And the third product of the light stage is oxygen. So what are the fates of these products of the light stage? Oxygen is either released from the plant or the plant may hold on to some of it and use it in respiration. So that's done with. The plant has either released it or it will use it in respiration. ATP, we didn't see anything else happen to that in the light stage, which means the plant is going to use that now in the dark stage, and the same with NADPH. Let's have a little look at the equation for photosynthesis again. So we had 6 carbon dioxide plus 6 water, 6H2O, plus light energy in the presence of chlorophyll. will give us glucose, C6, H12, O6, and oxygen, 6O2. Now the reason I've written this down again is because I want to look at each component of the chemical equation and see have we used this already in photosynthesis. So carbon dioxide, that wasn't used in the light stage, which means it still needs to be dealt with in the dark stage. Water was used in the light stage, it was split, so that's been dealt with. The light energy was absorbed by the chlorophyll in the light stage, so those two components have been used. Glucose, that has not yet been produced. It was not produced during the light stage, so that's going to be used in the dark stage. And oxygen, as we have seen, was produced during the splitting of water in the light stage of photosynthesis, and then the plant released it. So that has been dealt with. So what we've left with ATP, NADPH, carbon dioxide, and glucose. So these are the things that are going to be used during the dark stage of photosynthesis. And the dark stage, you'll be glad to hear, is much more straightforward than the light stage. So glucose needs to be produced. And the chemical formula for glucose is C6, that means it has six carbons, H12, 12 hydrogens, O6, C6, H12, O6, that is glucose. So glucose needs to be produced. This is the whole point of photosynthesis. And as we mentioned, ATP was a product of the light stage and we need to know now what is its fate? What is going to happen to it in the dark stage? NADPH was another one. It was produced during the light stage. What is going to happen to that now? And the other thing was carbon dioxide. So ATP, NADPH, carbon dioxide and glucose. If we just go back over here we will see ATP, NADPH, carbon dioxide and glucose. These are the things that are going to be used in the dark stage. So what is the fate of ATP? What happens to it? ATP breaks down into exactly what it was made from in the beginning and we saw that it was made from ADP plus P plus energy. The function of ATP is to store and transfer energy. It is a high energy molecule. So during the light stage, ATP, ATP was produced from these things. ATP then transports the energy to the dark stage, breaks down, releases the energy, and the energy is used to make glucose. NADPH. What is the fate of NADPH? Well, we saw in the light stage that NADPH was composed of two electrons, 
a hydrogen ion and NADP positive. Now the function of NADPH is to store and transfer hydrogen ions and electrons. So it's made from these things during the light stage. It stores the electrons and the hydrogen ions, transfers them to the dark stage, breaks down and then the hydrogen ions and the electrons are used to make glucose. We also know that the plant absorbs carbon dioxide from the air. It takes it in through the stomata of the leaves. And the plant is going to use this carbon dioxide to make glucose. And that is it. That is the dark stage. So if we have a look, glucose, it needs some carbon. It gets the carbon here from carbon dioxide. It needs hydrogen. It gets the hydrogen from NADPH. Now NADPH originally got the hydrogen from the splitting of water in the light stage. Glucose also needs oxygen and it gets the oxygen here from carbon dioxide. It does not get its oxygen from O2. The O2 that was produced during the light stage is released by the plant. The oxygen that is used to make glucose comes from carbon dioxide. So CHO. C H O. Electrons are also required for the formation of glucose and energy because this of course is an anabolic reaction so energy is required for it. This energy originally came from the sun. The plant trapped it, ATP stored it, transferred it to glucose. The energy from the sun the plant has now managed to capture it and store it in glucose and that really was the whole point of photosynthesis to, to make this glucose and to take the energy from the sun. If you want to have a look at the previous videos go to biolog.ie and there are now a total of four vodcasts or videos on photosynthesis.